Hey everyone, my name is Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and today we're taking a look at our brand new transition pack for DaVinci Resolve. This one's called M Transition Distortion. There are 50 transitions included in this pack, some with glitchy type of distorted effects. Lots of stuff to play with, I can't wait to show you, so let's go ahead and take a look inside DaVinci Resolve. All right, so once you have M Transition Distortion installed, you can find it under your effects library up here under video transitions. You should see M transition distortion right there. If I click this, you can see all 50 presets that come included with this pack. Now I like to have on my hover scrub preview option right here. If you click the three dots, you can get to this little menu. And what this lets you do is uh, wherever your playhead is, I can kind of scrub through each of these transitions and see how they're going to look and how they're going to affect my cut. Now, something I want to mention, uh, this is true of all transitions. You have to make sure that you've got enough video on both sides of the cut point. So here you can see if I click on this little cut there, it turns red and that just indicates that this is actually the end of the clip. I cannot extend it out to the right any further, which means if I were to grab a transition, you can see that it's only going to align to the left side here. So what I could do is trim this back and then align it back up with the neighboring clip. And now if I click on this cut point, now you can see it's green on both sides, which lets me know that there is in fact additional video on both sides of this cut. And from here, I would be able to apply the transition with the center alignment like that. And now let's say we wanted to kind of re-time these two shots together, because in this shot, if we go back far enough, you can see he's putting on his headphones in this one and we're doing the same action in this shot. Now normally if you just kind of, you know, take this clip and trim it back and then move it over like this, you lose your transition that way. So another option you can do is you can hit T on the keyboard and your cursor will turn into the trim edit tool. You can also see up here, you can hit A to get to the normal cursor and T to get to the trim edit mode. And with this, you can drag your clip along and keep the edit points the same so that your transition doesn't disappear on you. And from here, you can kind of retime the clip within the boundaries of the edit. So now you can see he starts to put his headphones on and he continues in the next shot. Just helps with a little bit of continuity. And speaking of continuity, uh, most of these transitions have some sort of directionality to them. And you'll see over here in the inspector, you can flip the direction. So in this case, it works really well because we can kind of get this actor to look like he's sort of morphing into his position right over here. And we could even kind of maybe dial down that distortion strength to make it a little bit more seamless. So like I said, most of these transitions will have the flip direction option there for you. Um, some of them like a 48, this one, in addition to being able to flip the direction, you can also change this from horizontal to vertical. So if you look through here, it kind of moves the clip up like that. You can also make it move down by flipping that direction. And uh, that works well because it makes him look like he's kind of falling down. So yeah, I think that looks really great on that one. Now moving down the timeline, uh, let's take a look at number 30 here. I like this one because it sort of crushes the blacks. So if you look at this shot right here, we got a lot of contrast. It's mostly a dark shot with these really bright, thin lines. And so with this transition, it's kind of isolating just the uh, brightest areas because this one's got some colorization built into the effect. If we don't want that, you could always disable it, but I kind of like what it does. It kind of pushes that black way down there like this. Maybe we'll dial back that distortion just a little bit. And uh, you'll also find the prism control in most of these presets. This will just add kind of this RGB split kind of thing. You can change the X and the Y strength so we get this cool little harsh line distortion there. Now, in addition to the prism control, you also have a flash control in most of these. So number 18, for example, uh, you can see this one will give you these vertical distortion streaks like this. And you can see the flash is on by default with this one. So we could turn it off if we don't want the bright highlight in the middle, but I kind of like this one turned on and you can even dial up the strength if you want. So we get this really bright flash and maybe that's too extreme. So we'll bring that back down. You could also change the color. So maybe for this example, we could try kind of like a light blue that kind of matches with these two shots there. And it looks really natural and organic. Doesn't look too over the top. Now, sometimes you want a more subtle transition. And of course you could always 
you know, dial down most of these settings. You could turn off things like the flash, the prism, you know, reduce the distortion strength quite a bit on this one. Uh, but there's some of these transitions like number 12, which is sort of already subtle out of the box. So when you want something that's kind of just really nice and tasteful like this one, uh, yeah, number 12 is, is a great way to kind of just add something special without distracting the audience. Now let's move down the timeline a little more and I'm going to drop on uh, 42 onto this clip right here. And you can see this one adds some grain as well as a little bit of camera shake. This following shot there sort of vibrates in a really interesting way. We could turn off the shake if we don't want that or we could reduce, you know, the X. Same with the grain. If we don't want the grain, we could just disable that or dial down some of the grain power. Pretty nice. Now, one thing I want to remind you, uh, you don't always have to use a transition in between two shots. You can always just make a cut on the same shot like this. And then you could add something like this just to kind of give it a little bit more of a flicker or something interesting happening, maybe on a beat, something like that. Now, I also want to show you, uh, you don't have to use these with footage. You could also apply these transitions to text. So for example, I'm just going to use the basic, you know, text plus right here. I'm going to drop this right onto my timeline and uh, let's just say maybe warp. I'm going to change the font. Let's make it pretty small and maybe stretch out the tracking. And now look what happens when I apply a transition to my text. We have a really quick and easy uh, motion graphic to introduce our text. And maybe we'll make a cut here and change the word. And let's just try another one. How about 44 for this one? That one gives us kind of this negative flash and it kind of flickers into the old word and finally the new one again. And you can always, you know, combine these with maybe we'll put a transition on our footage. And I actually kind of like to offset these slightly so that they don't look as uh, put together and kind of more chaotic, right? And maybe we'll add one last word over here and uh, let's try maybe 38. And for my footage, I'm gonna drag on this uh, 34 preset at the very end of my clip. Now this particular transition gives you this kind of cool, you know, pixelation texture right here. You can turn this off if you just want a standard transition, but whenever you have it on, you can also dial in the resolution or the pixel frequency as well as the shape. So maybe for this, we'll go with like a triangle, something like that. And then lastly, let's try uh, 46 on our text. And kind of the same thing as before, I like to offset these a little bit like that. And maybe we'll flip the direction so that it looks like the footage distortion is influencing the letters. So you can see what I mean with the uh, offset of those transitions. It looks like the footage is pushing the text away and we have like a couple of frames where the text exists on its own. So you can combine these with logos, with uh, you know other text presets and titles, as well as footage and images and things like that. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up for me. Again, this was M Transition Distortion. You can check it out on our website. There will be a link in the description below this video. If you don't want to miss out on future videos like this and future product releases, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.